Back into Thursday, joining us now with a health checkup here is Dr. Isaac Bogosh. Dr. Bogosh, good morning to you and Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Good morning. Great to chat with you both. Okay, we're going to begin with the BC hospitals this morning because they are saying they're seeing a record number of admissions, Dr. Bogosh, largely due to respiratory illness and surgeries. Now, we spoke to you just before the uh, holiday. Can you update the situation for us uh, when it comes to hospitals and what we're seeing right now? Yeah, I mean, certainly uh, we know December and January are very busy months for respiratory viruses. That was true well before COVID-19. Every winter we'd talk about hallway medicine and crowded emergency departments. Now, add COVID to the mix. Now, obviously COVID isn't anything remotely close to what it was a few years ago, earlier on in the pandemic, but of course it's still here. Of course it's still circulating. There's a lot of it around and it can still make people sick and bring people to hospital, especially more vulnerable individuals and especially people who are on the older end of the spectrum who are more susceptible to severe manifestations of the virus. So you have an already stretched healthcare system and now putting uh, COVID on top of that makes things very, very challenging, especially in the, the winter months where we see other respiratory viruses circulating. So, Dr. Borgash, where are we? Are we, when we talk about the tra trajectory of the respiratory illness illnesses right now, so have we peaked? Are, are we peaking? Where are we at now? Uh, you know, if, when we look at flu and RSV, for example, which we've known uh, for, for a long, long time, usually those start to peak in early January, and then we start to see the decline, and they tend to peter out. For example, flu tends to peter out uh, by the tail end of uh, February and, and, and into March. That doesn't mean that once we peak, that doesn't mean that it's easy peasy and, and, and smooth sailing. That means you have to come all the way down the other side of the mountain. So there's still a lot of circulating respiratory viruses like flu and RSV, but they'll get better with time. COVID, when we look at past years, COVID also tends to peak around this time as well. It's not perfectly aligned with, with uh, influenza, but we should probably start to see rates decline shortly but it's all still important to recognize even when they're declining it's still around you can still get sick it's still okay to take steps to protect yourselves and those around you from getting ill all right and to that point jn1 is the new dominant covid strain here in canada uh talk to us about that <clears throat> excuse me and how big a part it is uh, playing right now Right. So we know COVID-19 is a virus. We know viruses mutate, especially COVID-19. And currently, the this is under the Omicron umbrella. This is called JN1. And JN1 is the dominant, we'll call it sub-lineage of Omicron right now. As of about December 17th, uh, it was the most dominant sub-lineage of, of Omicron, and that's very likely to continue. Now, we haven't had recent updates because things were paused for the holiday season, but it's circulating. I think the key points to remember are it's still COVID. The rules are still the same. The vaccines still do a remarkable job in keeping people healthy and preventing uh, people from going to hospital uh, and reducing severe illness. Masks and indoor settings can reduce the risk of infection regardless of what variant is circulating. Improving indoor air quality is still helpful in preventing more distant transmission in indoor settings. Staying at home when you're sick is also helpful regardless of COVID or not. Uh, by you know reducing the risk of infecting others. So it doesn't really matter per se what the new circulating sublineage is because the rules are still the same in terms of how you protect yourself and how we protect those around us. Dr. Bogosh, does it matter to know what was behind most of the illnesses over the holidays? Because it, we talked about it when we all got back to work, just how many people were sick. I know so many people that had to cancel their Christmas gatherings and whatnot. Knock on wood, our family uh, did not get infected, but so many people did. Do we know if that was COVID or influenza? Does it matter? Uh, so for starters, it was a mix of all of them. And when, you know, I, many of my colleagues and myself, we worked in the hospital over, over the Christmas and New Year's season, and we saw COVID, we saw flu, we saw RSV, we saw lots of other things bringing people in. So it was all of the above. Does it matter? I, I think it depends on who you ask. I think it matters. I think it's important to know. I think it's important to have a well-informed general public because people who have good quality information at their fingertips can make smart decisions for themselves. For example, if you know there's a lot of circulating COVID-19 and you're at risk for more severe manifestations of COVID, maybe that drives you to go out and, and get an updated vaccine. If you know there's a lot of circulating flu and flu is, is a 
a really nasty infection. Maybe it drives people to say, hey, you know what? There's vaccines that are free and widely available. I should go get a vaccine. So I think this this information is important. Okay, Dr. Bogash, we're talking off the top of the show about winter really taking hold uh, this week uh, right across the country. And with that, of course, uh, we've got a lot of people uh, looking for warmer climbs. And there is a warning for sun seekers about a a global surge in dengue fever. Uh, What do travelers need to know about this? So a reminder that dengue fever is a mosquito transmitted virus. It's very common in tropical and subtropical areas of the world. This year, there's a lot more circulating dengue compared to past years. And you can protect yourself by putting on mosquito repellent and avoid getting bitten by mosquitoes when traveling. Dengue, you know, there's a lot of infections globally. Some people will have no symptoms. Some people will feel pretty crummy, headache, uh, uh, fever, muscle aches and pains. It's rare, it can happen, it's rare to have very, very, very severe manifestations of this infection, but of course it can happen. And I think that the key take home point is for people who are traveling, go seek pre-travel advice before you travel. Because yes, of course, there's a lot of dengue out there, but there's other things that can uh, put a, you know, a downer on uh, on a vacation, uh, malaria and other infections. And and seeking pre-travel health advice is a great idea because there's professionals who know exactly what to do, exactly what preventative measures to take so you can have a healthy, safe and happy trip. Okay. We're going to have to leave it there. Dr. Bogosh, thank you so much. My pleasure. Have a great day.